if you were following along in the reading of the gospel on this text that I've given you, you notice I substituted a different word when I read it because uh, Jesus here, when the woman touched her, he says, it says in the King James, virtue came, he said, I perceive that virtue came out of me. I have no idea why, uh, maybe, well, maybe I can guess why the translators in England, when they wrote the King James, when they translated the King James, put virtue in there, because most of the time they use, the biggest amount of times they translate the word power, dunamis. Interestingly enough, dunamis is a feminine word in Greek. It's power. You think you think it would be? I would think it would be masculine, but no, it's it's feminine. And uh, it's it's interesting if you look at those kind of gender things in, in in the vocabulary of the Bible. But power is thought to be is is somehow has a feminine side to it. And maybe that's kind of built in to God's kind of power because God's power is infinite power but it's also infinitely gentle and his power is absolutely good and his goodness is all powerful. His power is a loving power. And his love, when you read, I've said before that 1 Corinthians 13 gives the essence of orthodoxy. The love, love never fails, the unfailing love of God in Christ is the core of holy tradition. But that is also power. And Jesus is showing here, he's like a fountain of power. And she touched him, and the power came out from him. When we kiss an icon and touch it with our lips, we're venerating the work of God. And that's the work of God is in the saints, is connected with the humanity of Jesus, the Son of God. And so, the prototype of the saint, we are touching, <clears throat> we're touching the humanity of Christ, and the humanity of Christ is hypostatically connected to the divinity of Christ, and so we are doing the same kind of healing touch. And you kiss an icon. Or when you partake of the body and blood of Christ, far more so, you are connecting to his body and his blood that is given for your salvation. So what he shows here is his great power. When Paul prays in Ephesians, he describes in the first 14 verses salvation from God's point of view, and therefore, and then he wants he wants to apply that, and what he wants is that you 
Listen to this. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. You see, the two signs of true Christians is the same today. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and love to the saints. We have this love in Christ for each other here. No matter what, where we came from, who we are, what we are like, we love one another. That's the sign. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have loved one for another. But Paul prays for the Ephesians, but he's praying for all the Christians. Cease not to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. He prays for us that we have, and each of us has, the spirit of wisdom. Christ is our wisdom. And revelation the, the opening up of the truth of God, the transcendent truth of God is open to us in the knowledge of Him. That the eyes of your understanding, your noetic vision, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saint. And then he says that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. We can grow in that knowledge of the power of God. And that is what it means to grow in your knowledge of what it is, what orthodoxy is. Orthodoxy is not an empty tradition of words, of human words. Orthodoxy is power. Not any power, but perfectly loving, good, holy, righteous power. To usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Think of all the Paschas we've celebrated, and we we live in that in that Paschal season. We live in that gentle, loving, holy power of God which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and then ascension set him at the right hand his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality now this word is just the word uh, archaic the archaes, the, you know, archpriest, it means first priest. And arche, the Archimedean principle, is the first principle. But Christ is risen above all the first principles of this earth, all the people who are, are first, and the, even the angels, and their structure of authority in governing the earth. Christ is, his power is above all these first things and and it's above all it says power here but the word is exousios all authorities Christ is above our president he's above congress he's above all the evil authorities that are at work in the chaos in our political society. He's above. He rules. 
They only get to do what they do because he gives them permission to do it. He is above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. See, we are in him. We, in our prayer, we have in Christ, in the perfect will of God, to pray the perfect will of God, we have the authority of Christ in our prayer. Over all the powers of this world, we surrender to God's ruling. He makes the decisions. But He will answer our prayer, asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find. You shall receive power, Jesus said. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And that prayer is exercised in a, that, that power of our loving power for good, for the salvation of men as they seek, those who seek the truth, we're backing them up with our power and our prayer. The church, which is his body, we are his body. Look around you. You see the body of Christ. The fullness of him that fills all in all. We are the fullness of Christ. Particularly as we surrender to him, partake in his body and blood, we are brought again and anew into that fullness. I want to give another passage to expound this same thing. You read, start reading the second book of Peter. He says, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of, our, and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power. Now this is the word power, the same word that Power came out of him to heal the woman who had the flow issue of blood. That power is, is just an overflowing of the power that overflows to us in the holy mysteries of Christ and in baptism and in confession and forgiveness and in tonsuring of monks and nuns and in the tonsuring of priests and deacons and subdeacons and readers. The power has given unto us a few things. No, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Whatever you need for life and godliness, that power is there for you. Through the knowledge of him that hath called you to glory and virtue. Now this is the, this word should be translated virtue. This is aritas. That's different. He's called us by his glory and virtue. He's called us into the glory by His glory and by His virtue into virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. By grace we have begun to be God's. 
God became man in order that man may become God and we enter into his divinity and we are entered into theosis by partaking by his promises we partake of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and that is what he provides us that's his power that is what the power of the Holy Spirit is one more text In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. What, without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. He was in, that was a true light that lightens every man that comes into the world. You see, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge we receive. He was in the world, the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto his own things, and his own people received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he authority to become the children of God, the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born. You have been by baptism born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You're born of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So you see, that's, that's the power of God. Jesus said, or, or Paul said, that men look on the gospel of the cross as foolishness, but to us it is the power of God unto salvation to as many as believe. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Grant us your power and your grace. Open our hearts to your loving power and righteousness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever.